Before we get acquainted with the tool itself, let's hop into the dashboard of what you'll see when you first log into Canva, just to become familiar with where to go and how to get, get things started. So simply enough, this is what you'll see when you arrive. And you know some of the biggest points to know is how to create a new design. So three important ways, or two important ways to do this is up in the top left here, you'll see this teal button. And clicking on that, you'll see all of the available sizes that it has built in. Important to know is search is super powerful in Canva. Uh, so as, you, as you'll see throughout the, this entire course, I'm gonna be searching for a lot because it brings things up very efficiently. So it's really nice. In this case, let's say we wanted to create a Pinterest post, we would start typing Pinterest and there's Pinterest graphic. Clicking on it will immediately throw us into the creator. So this is starting with a blank template and then, or a blank canvas. And then from here, you can apply a template and everything else. We'll get into this when we get into the actual uh, tool itself. Other way to go is if you see a template here that you really like, they'll, every time you come in, you might see something new. And if something really inspires you, you can click on it and get started right away. In addition to, if you want to kind of look at templates all together before jumping into design, you'll come over here to the search. So to create one right away, left side, create a design, kind of search for what you wanted to create or enter your custom dimensions. So uh, I know it's going to be 1200 by 1200. I can do that as well. So creating is on the left side there. To kind of browse templates, we could say, and again, using our Pinterest example, Pinterest graphic. And now it's going to present me with a full screen of all of the various templates it has, allowing us to start with it. So we'll browse, we'll browse, we'll browse. Kind of a, a bigger view here, which is nice. Um, and if we do like something, we just go ahead and click on it, use this template, and brings us right into the editor with that one ready to go. So either start, like starting by searching for a up here in the top, search for a particular type like Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook cover, see all the templates, or if you know what you're doing, hop into the top left, create a design. Now, another way to get to those templates is on the left side here, this is your main navigation. Uh, we started at home. All your designs, are, these are just a list of all the designs you've previously created. And you can see the new design I just clicked into with that template that shows up immediately. Um, but anything you've ever created will be inside of all your designs. So if you just want to find yours, they'll be within that. You can also get to there from the home screen. You'll see there are these big headers like your designs. So here's those same ones I'd created. Posters, Instagram posts. Those are templates we could start from. But another way to get to your designs. But here's everything we have created. Templates, this is very much like the first screen, except it focuses just on the templates that they have. Again, with a search up on the top, uh, you know, if we want to say flyers, come all around, just show all the beautiful flyer templates we can have. And even better, you can search in particular, you can filter them down. So if it's a flyer for a birthday, I just clicked on the birthday one. Here's all the birthday ones. Um, you'll see here this navigation up top. This will just allow you to kind of jump back between what you have started to search. We can get rid of the flyers or click on templates to see all of the categories again. Categories listed over the side here. So this would be before you start your design, I need to create a poster, but first I'm going to browse all of the poster designs. And again, though, you can just, if you want to get into the editor first, you can also just type poster, select it and doing so will create the design at which point, again, you have an opportunity to select and apply templates from within it. So you know, there's a lot of different ways to kind of get to where you want to go within here. Uh, quickly rounding this off though, let's get back to the home page and start from there. Photos, um, within the editor, you'll be able to choose photos. So you don't really need to come to this screen. However, if you wanted to like a whole bunch of photos, almost creating a kind of photo uh, bank for yourself to use within it, that's a possibility. So in this case here, what I really suggest, if you come to the photo tab, come over here to the right side, you'll see a drop down saying free and premium. Uh, premium, even if you have the pro account, you have to pay for the photos. And if it's a stunning photo, pay. Like obviously the photographer has done great work. But if you want to kind of focus on the free photos, go ahead, click on that and hit free. And we'll be doing this same type of filtering inside the editor as well. But from there, here's all beautiful photos. 
completely free and easy to use. And as you can see, you can kind of take a look at it more in depth and also go ahead and download it. What you can also do if you want to save it for a later time, let's say we want to save this coffee, always a favorite, you can hit into like. So this will now go over to your like folder or the likes here on the left side and we'll talk about that in just a second. So from if we want to browse photos kind of all together, choose a bunch for us to use and like a couple of them, the photos tab. And of course search and let's say again my favorite with coffee. Now in doing that it's kind of reselected free and premium. You'll see that there's a little tag in the bottom right that tells you you'll have to pay for them. So instead we'll just go free filter and there's all the beautiful free photos we will find. Um, I'm also throughout the course I'm also going to be telling you some other free places online to find additional free to use photos. So you won't just be limited to what we find here in Canva. But it's a great start. Let's go ahead and like another one just to have a few in our like bank, like folder, which we'll have shortly. So next up are, is apps and you can very much think about this as a, an extension to Canva. So you can connect Canva to various services. Um, in your day-to-day -day workflow it may not be super useful for you but something to play around with and see all the capabilities of it. So I'm not going to go through each and every one but for instance you could connect your Dropbox so that as you save th save files out it goes to a Dropbox. Let's say if you're sharing it with somebody. Google Maps so if you have an event coming up on a poster and you want to have a map of where it is this allows you to add it. Very simple to use, very nice. Now these enhancer images, these are actually kind of built into the editor too. These are just effects you can apply to photos. So calling them apps is a little bit on the edge, but that's okay. Uh, same thing too now, if you want to connect your LinkedIn, so you, anything you create in Canva will post immediately there. You can do so. Same with MailChimp, so if you're creating newsletters, you can create a photo here and then have it saved to your MailChimp for use. You see that true with uh, Pinterest, PowerPoint all these really great options. So a lot of extensibility as far as once you're done creating the design, where does it go? And in some cases like Google Maps or a Giphy, uh, it also allows you to pull in photos, same with Facebook, like where do photos come from and where can you save your photos? And in fact, so I think I mentioned earlier, Dropbox is more about if you save a photo to Dropbox, you can bring it in to your Canva design. So really, really useful if you have some external apps that you want to connect. I'm not going to go through, like I said, and connect these individually, but really useful ones. Uh, QR code especially, that one's nice because if you have a link you want to send people to on a postcard or a post poster or something, you can put a link in so they can scan it with their phone and it's a very easy link. So lots of interesting apps to allow you to bring in your own media or export media to your various places. So BrandKit. Now for the purpose of this, and you hear me mention this a few times, brand, I'm going to be focusing on using the free version of Canva because I don't want to uh, talk about any features that if you're, if you're only on free that you can't use because it's on the pro account. So I don't want to be teaching things you can't use. So I'm assuming uh, we're going to work within the free version. The BrandKit a lot of this is not available for the free one. The only useful one for us is the palette. So if you have a couple colors, let's say my brand colors, Canva, even on the free version, will allow you to add a few colors. So if we add a green, if we add like a the orange, probably blue is better to go with orange as it's complementary. And there you go. Now it does have, there you go, that three color limit, but even that is still useful. So what happens, we do create design. Let's go real quick for a poster. You'll see as you, and don't worry about this part yet, this we'll be getting into. But if you're adding a square and you want to choose colors, your brand colors will now be featured and easy enough to use, right? At least up to three. Generally speaking, you shouldn't have more than two colors, so it still ends up being fairly useful. So that's good to see. So that's located within brand kit. You can't, unfortunately, you can't do the logos, you can't do anything with the fonts, but you can do the um, colors, which is very useful. Uh, anytime like uh, you're wanting, do I have access to it? Just click on it and it'll come up with this pop-up that tells you, no, in fact, you don't. You know, so um, I tricked you there thinking maybe you could edit a font, but no, you can't, but that's okay. The, the colors at least are very useful. 
uh, design school. So this comes from Canva. It's a great set of resources with some very basic concepts about how to use Canva. And it goes a little bit into business and branding. There's some fairly good courses here. So despite this being a course as well, I also encourage you to take a time and go through this. Um, we're going to be covering a bit more about beyond the basics and some tricks and tools you can really use. But if you want to check out a few uh, some auxiliary vi videos, this is actually a really great resource. So I would recommend it. Uh, create a team. So even within the free version, you can create a team. Now, I'll bet with a few restrictions, but it still can be fairly useful. So if you are working in collaboration with a few people and you want them to be able to create graphics within your same Canva account or you want to share and kind of show them the people, this can be useful. Uh, so all you would have to do is I'm going to just add myself, for example. Now the two for free, what you can get, uh, there's some extra roles if you have the pro account. For free, you can have member and administrator. A member can create uh, new designs. They can use the same brand kit that you have, although they can't alter it. Uh, they can use templates you've done. They can't save templates for the use of the rest of your team. And they can't, can't obviously invite anybody else. Administrator, so they can change the brand kit. So they can, in this case with the free, change the colors. They can create templates for the whole team to use, and they can invite other members. So it's just a bit more of a slightly more capabilities. Like as I, as I mentioned, there's two additional roles if you have the pro account, but we won't be focusing on that. So if you want somebody to work with you on the same Canva account, you can invite them in as a member or an administrator. <coughs> so next up we have folders. So this is very useful for uh, arranging and organizing your work. So if you have, let's say, an Instagram folder and a Facebook folder, then you keep everything separate. Or if you're working for a couple clients, you can create folders. Now, I say that carefully because with the free account, you can have two different folders. And that's all. Um, now, of course, you can, within likes, you remember that we went through and liked a number of things, and they will appear, appear here for use as we need it. Uh, they also show up in the actual editor, which we'll talk about later. But you can create folders. I can go ahead and create a new folder. And for instance, if I say Pinterest, you can invite a team member that you had from the previous one to come in and edit anything within this folder, which is useful. So anything you put into this folder, they'll have access to. Let's create this folder, and from here you can upload images if you want to organize them that way. But you can also move designs into this particular folder. So how you would do that is from the All Your Designs screen, or even the Home screen. But let's do it from All Your Designs. I had created this one for Pinterest. If I click these three dots on the top right, I'm going to get a bunch more options. So but in this case, let's focus on Move to Folder, and I can choose any of those folders that I have. So in this case, let's go ahead and move it to the Pinterest one. Great, there it is. And now you see the two folders here arrive, and there's a little bit of organization for us. Now, if you try to create a new folder, uh, we're going to go ahead and see it's locked behind the pro account. But to at very least, you can get some organization going, which would be helpful. Um, the rest of it, too, uh, all your designs, just a list of everything you have, likes we discussed. If you've purchased photos, this is where they will be or even templates, this is where they'll show up. Now, if somebody has shared a design with you, this is the folder where they would show up. Anything you've uploaded uh, for use in any of the designs from here or from the editor, this is where they'll show up. And then your folders, anything you've deleted, you have a small window to try to undelete it in case it was done by accident. So super useful there. Now this brings up a good point too with uh, the last one really with dealing with the dashboard and the interface. Uh, if you hover over design, specifically with ones you've created, you know, so we're on the home page here, you'll see that as I hover over just basic templates, nothing comes up. But as I hover over mine, you get these three dots. Because what that's going to enable are these extra options. So you can duplicate it. If this is a really good uh, template that I've liked that I created, I can copy it and then work on that. Obviously, we didn't move to a folder, the download options. If you want to download it right from this screen, that'll help. And from there, you can choose from any of the download options that are available inside the editor. Comment on it. So shareable, sorry, I uh, missed the shareable link. So if you want to share it with somebody, uh, you can go ahead and get that link and then paste it and share it off to somebody else. Comment and like. So 
after you've seen this, and especially, again, this might be really useful for team members if you want to make some changes or suggestions or make a note, you can do so here. Let's close that out. And then lastly, of course, move the trash. So if you're ready to delete it, in this case, you know, this was just a quick one, off it goes. So kind of quick brief overview. A lot of, a lot of the stuff you're going to be doing is you're going to hop into here and create a design. Choose what type of design, you know, Facebook, and choose from any of these, which will throw you right into the editor. If you want to browse things first, come up to the search at the top, you know, do that same entry. Let's say do a Facebook cover and you'll kind of have a larger view of everything. So that's just if you want templates and then really the most useful stuff outside of that is the folders where you'll find all of the ones that you saved and organized in that sense. And you know, and that is to say all your designs of course as well is super useful as well. So that's just a really fast overview of the dashboard so we can feel more familiar of it. Remember top left, create a design to find the type of thing you want. Search is your friend, so just search for the name of what you want to create and then hop into the editor from there, which we'll start to cover in the next course. See you soon.